Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we have a wonderful NA regular skirmish for you. Our first map, as you can see, is Pry Ford. You get a nice overview here. Very open and very fun, especially with all the cavalry weapons. Can shoot relatively fast compared to normal. And our second map for today is Dunker Church. Again, a very huge open map. It should be fun. And today, our regiments that are playing on the Union, we have the AP, 9th Corps, 7th Massachusetts, 6th Wisconsin, and 8th Connecticut, whereas on the Confederates, we have Sussie Brigade, Pickett's Brigade, 24th Georgia, 20th New York, and the Pennsylvania Army. We will be having an interview with some of these leaders after the match to see how they did. And along with that, our team for today is myself as Guardian Eagle with that one, Sevy, and we have a special guest, Captain Drake from the 10th U.S. How's it going for you guys today? Oh, I'm doing phenomenal. Just had some Chinese food, and I'm ready to, uh, you know, see how this event goes down. I'm also doing great, and I also had Chinese food. This uh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> it was meant to be. The duality of man. You had fried rice, right? Oh hell yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So Dude, I'm like, I want some leftovers. We got two maps: Pry Ford, Dunker Church. Give us your thoughts on what you think each team's gonna do for those rounds. Well, so uh, first. Yep. Last time we um last time we saw Pry 4 in the channel, uh, we saw the Union do a slightly new strategy where they pushed up the center. Um, while I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to recreate that strategy, push up the center to take the uh, the point and keep the Confederates on the right. Um, I would expect them to do a more conventional right push, uh, and then swing into the center. Uh, that's that's what I'm looking forward to. I also agree with that. I think they're gonna go more right. Um, there's nothing really on the left side of the map. Uh, usually it ends up in. Disaster. There's just so much open ground on the left side, so I think they'll be pushing that right rocks on the on the far right Union right uh, Confederate left. Mm -hmm. That's just what I think. What about oh. Dunker's Church? Yeah, Dunker's Church. What do you guys think of that? Well, Dunker's Church is. Um, I think it used to be one of the community's favorite maps because if I open it, it gives you. Well, it really only shovels you into like three lines of attacks, uh, center, left, or right. But really, what more do you need? Um, the meta or quote unquote for a while there was just to push the right push the right into the woods yada 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 uh but i've seen more groups uh try that by pushing the left pushing the center um whether that's due to trying to something new or whether it's due to uh not caring about the old strategies i don't know um but i'm looking i, I don't know what to expect going into dunker church you know we can see a more traditional push or we can see something new I think at least two regiments are going to be in the center, and the rest will all be on the right side. Might get like a small, maybe skirmishing unit, maybe a small regiment on the left side getting into the woods. But other than that, I think the bigger push will be coming from the right side instead of the left or center. Hmm. All right. Thank you guys for your insight to the first round. We still got some downtime, so we're going to cut to our spectator screen and watch the mustering round. Yes, uh, I always um, the Eastwood skirmish must turn around. It's weird because the Confederates always push really far forward onto these rocks. You never see that in, like an actual Eastwood skirmish game. Um, it just occurred to me that some people don't actually know where Eastwood skirmish is. So I'm gonna fly really high up right now, and you'll see it over there. You've probably never seen it over there because it's not part of the main game. If you look to the uh, the west, you can see Nicodemus Hill and Miller's Cornfield. Uh, this is where Eastwood's is. There's Eastwood's in the woods right there. This is a Confederate spawn. No, wait. No, no, there's a Confederate spawn over there uh, on Eastwoods in the Woods. Here's the uh, Confederate conf uh, Union spawn on Eastwoods in the Woods is right there. So if you ever want to uh, see where Eastwoods is compared to the rest of the game, here's where it is. Remember, Eastwoods, in historical terms, happened right before the Battle of Antietam. This was like a little skirmishing move where McClellan finally got the first and second corps over the Antietam Creek to the north of Lee's army. So, yeah, there's this little bit of historical context for Eastwoods, which is our skirmish map for today. Or not the skirmish map, the mustering, the mustering. map for... Yeah, mustering map, that's what I meant to say. Jeez. So, yeah. And uh, these Confederates, I'll have them some fun up here. Mm -hmm. So, wait, are you still recording? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, all right, all right. Just have so, some fun. Sevi, you know if you... um. I think you click left click and right click at the same time. You can see uh, Rebel and Union flags. You only need yeah. to do right click. You only need to oh, do right, right click. click. Yeah. Yeah. Dummy. Left click zooms in. Oh. Yeah, dude, I'm I'm the master of spectating. Nah. Uh, but the the annoying thing is like when sometimes they don't show up for a couple of seconds. So the next thing I know, like my whole screen's covered in these, and I can't really tell yeah. what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Like if I look at it from here, it's like, oh yeah, this is a uh, there's some rebels there for sure. <laughs> It it seems to be going like really in and out of dark, but it's just because of the angle of the uh, the sun there. Sun. Remember this is yeah, this is like the night before Antietam. Um, we really uh, I don't remember exactly how many uh, deaths were at this skirmish, but it's a lot more bloody in game. You know that's what I know about video games is that they're almost all a lot more bloody than like their real life counterpart. Like Ultimate General, 
like the, the Battle of Philippi, the the Union first battle, there was like four Union losses. But to win that yeah. game, you need like 400, you know? Yep. Well, I mean, I think if you take the whole Battle of Antietam and, and you know, put it together, and if you take like these little skirmish maps, I think there's still more casualties in, in real life than there is in, in the game. That's there's probably just true. a lot more men on this field. Like, you know, we see like, I can imagine there was a giant line uh, for Dungas Church. There's probably like several giant lines, and we'll only see like a few couple small lines if, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, that's what they're probably gonna try to make historical mode worn too. I that that's why I hope that they neck it down a little bit, like I've been saying in the community discord, because it's like, it's like flanking is awesome and all, but what we saw in the tests is like, oh, now the entire line has to turn around and go back to uh to their spawn because ten guys took down their flag. And you know what? The it doesn't seem like anybody is against ten guys being able to take down a flag completely, um, like all the way behind the enemy lines. And I don't I don't really uh. I think it should be more linear. I think you should have to take one flag for the next. But we're not. We're, we're playing skirmishing, and that's what matters, right? I guess. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. So, who's the biggest group in this event? I wonder. I mean, probably the PA, ninth. the IX Corps. Ninth Corps, you think? Ninth Corps. Uh, ninth PA's Corps is up on group. Union side. Am I right? Yes. Yes. His ninth Corps is. Uh, they're taking up the 32nd Pennsylvania, so they're probably going to go top B or top A in the actual game, or bottom B. I'm sorry. Bottom A. God, I need to sleep. I've not slept enough last night. <laughs> I literally went through every single variation of company except the the one that they actually are. Why that Confederate flag is suicide? Master, ma magic of mustering round, I guess the Confederate flag just want to kill himself. And you know, this map, uh, the Confederate boundary is right around here on these trees. And obviously, in a normal game, the Confederates like way back here, like using their buck ball defensively. You know, doing little maneuvers to try to uh, bring down the Union, stop them from capping point, yada yada. But in mustering rounds, the Union's almost always at their spawn. Yeah. So we can see that the Confederates push really far forward. Actually, see, um, it's a smaller game uh, today. It's only 200 out of 300. So. Only 200 out of 300. Well, you know, it's, we've yeah. seen games that have gone to 300 and people actually have to wait to get in. Yeah, yeah. And we saw in that public uh, test branch, they're going trying to go to 400, so... Mm -hmm. I think that they should be more... Uh, not to be pessimistic, but I, my, it's my opinion they should be more practical with their player counts. Like the, uh, I think that the game should bounce more around 200 player servers than 400. Oh, there we go. Now starting off the game. Just because that's what we're gonna see more of. You know, more people buy the game. Uh, send us to your friends. Uh, <laughs> we could have 400. Yeah. Yeah. Prove me the fuck wrong, friends. right? <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> to Rude Eagle. <clears throat> so we're getting into first it time, tonight. First time you butt in like half an hour and it's just yeah. Like, oh, I was. An insult. Relieving myself, as they call it, <laughs> in some fancy places. You know, the Confederates, like obviously the Union, all have a state flag and a uh, and a Union flag. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know the Confederate convention because in game it seems kind of random if they just some of them just have stars and bars, some of them have stars and bars and like a, a Confederate cross. I wonder what their convention was for their uh, their flag bears. I don't know. I imagine that their militia groups probably had state flags, but I don't remember seeing... I mean, I recall the South Carolina flag for the Palmetto. Wow. You recall, so you were there, you saw it. Oh, you were yeah, there I in do. the Civil War. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, tell anyone, oh, Don't tell anyone, right? If they knew how old I was, they wouldn't let me buy the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, like, like, look, like that guy, one of the regiments only has one flag. It's just weird. It's only a Confederate cross, and like that that wasn't their national flag at this point. So yeah. So which map for is first? Oh, I can just hold tab. Pry first map is Pry Ford. Cool. Okay. Pry Ford. Yeah, Pry Ford. So I wonder which groups. Do we know which group is going to have the uh, the Sharps Carbons, the cavalry? That is a good question for another day. <laughs> well, I guess it's a good question for like a minute from now. Yeah. That's um, true. Yeah. We'll, we'll find out shortly. Yeah. The thing that we saw in the um the other pri the like a week or two ago. Um, was that the Union really didn't utilize their um, pistols as well as they could have. And I think that they missed out there because of that. But hopefully um, we see both sides utilize all of their advantages so that it's the best game we can get out of it. All right, so yeah, just starting off the round. Remember, right now, um, what interests me about this uh, the game as it is now and like how it changed since I first started playing was that the introduction of the transition little modes, like the historical context, I love those. Well, 
I have muted. You know what I mean? Like I, I love the fact that they're there, uh, but it did shorten the game time by a minute 30. And I wish that they were able to, uh, the developers were able to change it so that didn't happen. We can see over here on the Confederate team, uh, split evenly. Remember, one of these groups, the Holcomb Legion, used to be able to get uh, Sharps Carbons. Now they're not. They all are. They are all stuck with Enfields, except for Corporals, I think. Um, now over here on the Union, it was the Six Wisconsin that got the uh, Sharps Carbons and the pistols. pistols. So, yes. Well, yeah, that's a lot more important. Oh, now it's up to 212. Yeah. Slightly bigger serving. Cavalry. Now. Yep. If you want to have a good time, join the cavalry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and we can see that the Confederates are now moving to the right flank, uh, and some of them even, I'm sorry, yeah, to the, to the Union, right, and some, this is the 1st Maryland, uh, Zap Stars, and the PB are moving to the Confederate right, Union left. They're probably going to try to uh, mess up that artillery, um, seems like there's like four guys in artillery, oh, there's actually some guys, over, is this Clark's battery? I imagine it's probably Clark's, this is the 7th Michigan and the Clark's battery, or 7th Maine, I'm sorry, Massachusetts, I, uh, I tried three, I mean, I, I really... Need some caffeine in me. Uh, over here on the Confederate battery is the 5th Florida's battery. The 20th New York's battery with their glorious leader, Coker, right there, adjusting a rifled cannon. And the 5th North Carolina's battery. Ooh, one of these guys just got shot. Um, that is interesting to see that early in the game. We can see now that the 1st Maryland is engaging the, uh, the Union's cannons. And the Union sent a cannon point blank and overshoot because they're not primed from that close. Um, can, the, close uh, can the Confederates charge at those Union uh, cannons, or is that out of bounds for them? Well, it's out of bounds, but it's within 20 seconds. They can so they could get in there and still get a few stabs off and run out. They're choosing to They are getting that's... support. The Union is getting support now mm -hmm. and and, as they fall back. Yes, the so the 1st Maryland choosing to retreat in the face of some <laughs> Union support. And let's see what's happening on the Union right. Uh, the Confederates have taken up positions behind the stones, as would be expected. And the Union are instead of pushing on the right as conventional. Looks like they're all going left. I, uh... I see a unit going towards the center, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's that? Who's that unit in the center? This is the AP's 20th Maine. They're moving towards the center, and it looks like they're going to go to the uh, the rock formation, the the normal rock formation, uh, and meet up with the Sixth Wisconsin, who's already there because they had, remember they got faster reloads through their sharp scarbins. Uh, Confederate volleys shooting into the Union line, killing a couple of Union cavalrymen. But the Confederates are on a big open line. Some of them even kneeling. I don't support that move. Like they're already in an open line, so you know if. You're gonna be seen. You might as well be standing. Uh, Seems like though, they're not like, oh, taking a lot of casualties though. Maybe one or two. You just gotta hit their shots. This is this beautiful shot, such as the open line. Yeah, certainly. But instead of seeing constant, constant downs, the uh, Confederates are actually doing a pretty good job at suppressing them. So as much as their positioning could be improved to uh, lose or get actual losses, their massed fire is doing a lot to get the uh, cavalrymen suppressed. Still taking some losses though. It actually seems, from the Union point of view, that they are taking more casualties on the rocks. It's very interesting. Yeah, I would almost think that they'd uh, they'd be able to hold out longer because of their cover. But it looks like, well, I mean, numbers is just playing a huge factor. They're like, it's like eight to one almost. Yes. Six, yeah. Um, though the 20th main taking a volley right next to the cav. Mhm. Mm so now we can see the uh, the mast. Ooh, I'm looking over here on the far Union left. And they're actually on a stone wall, which I remember from really old games. I have not seen anyone use this stone wall in like more than a year and a half. Um, the 9th Corps, the 8th Ohio, and s which other group is this? Looks like the 7th Massachusetts are all p up and overing over this half stone wall up to the Confederate cannons. I, uh, I, I, I don't, don't know what they're doing. I don't, I don't think this is a good move. Like I said earlier before pre-game, that pre-round, uh, there's nothing really on the left side besides, you know, a unit can easily deal with them and the artillery. There's artillery that can support... Uh, mm -hmm. Rebel artillery that can support um, the any rebel regiment that's holding that right flank, uh, rebel right flank. Mm -hmm. But I think the unit here is gonna get massacred just by artillery alone. Well, the artillery seem to not even be shooting at them. Um, however, the uh, the artillerists seem to be shooting back at the other artillerists. They're they're toasting a big artillery duel. I don't know why these artillerists aren't shooting at the group on the Confederate right or the Union right. And speaking of the group on the Union right. Uh, they have lost a lot of men, it looks like. It uh, looks like the Union reinforcements over here in the 20th Main were able to inflict more heavy casualties than the cavalry alone. Um, up to the right of the Union's far left pushes the IVB up in these uh, these bushes, taking a skirmishing position, shooting both at the artillerymen and at other Confederate skirmishers, their Confederate counterparts on these rocks over here by point. This is a much different game than we usually see, but I don't know if it's necessarily better than the, uh, the strategies that are more generic of this map. Because, like you said, these guys, they uh, if they're trying to kill infantry, they can just be countered easily. And if they're trying to kill yep. artillery, then the canister will just get them. Exactly. Um, 
most rebel forces though holding to the our rebel left union right still there's only really uh there's only really artillery um fighting that infantry unit and, <laughs> and the infantry yeah. unit doesn't even <laughs> care about the artillery right? <laughs> trying to shoot them <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the Union's doing here. I don't even know how they can see them, see the rebels from all the way over here. There's maybe like a skirmishing unit on like those rocks if you can see mm -hmm. um, out in the distance. And Union not yeah, even it's... killing a lot of them. And the thing about these uh, these artillerymen is that, like, sure you can kill them, and sure the bad line or skirmishing, but you can't kill a sufficient quantity of them to actually do much. Um, so, you know, it is only 37 minutes, the game is still young, uh, we could see more Union pushes soon, but so far, we haven't seen the Union take much initiative. Can, uh, the Union guys, can they charge the, uh, Rebel batteries from that I left? don't believe so. I, I, I yeah. don't think so as well. I'm pretty sure you can get there in 20 seconds, but then you're dead. Yeah. At least that's what I recall, maybe, ooh, guys, red mist, they killed one guy. <laughs> However, that guy is now twerking out. That's that's funny. Um, some of these animations from afar, like when it just barely simplifies them, look really funny. Uh, I was trying to look at one of the guys where like, he was swapping through his arm, um, but then the one guy got murdered from Union Artillery. And again, I don't see why Union Artillery is focusing on killing one, maybe two uh, artillerymen like every 10 minutes and not shooting right in between these groups. Remember from a couple events ago that the artillery was always hitting right here. And if a shrapnel shot hit right there, it'd kill like six guys. Um, but the artillery's uh, prerogative seems to be instead counter-battering, which, I don't know, I, I think counter is a big waste of artillery, in my opinion. Exactly. Um, if the Rebs, you know, I think I see the Rebel cannons aiming more for the infantry units, or no, no, maybe maybe yep. counter-battery as well. It, like, it looks to me like everybody's just counter-battering each other. <laughs> I, think just, I think it's a waste. I think it's a really big waste. They're wasting opportunities to inflict a lot of damage. Oh, some Confederate skirmishers on the Union's left uh, forced, looks like four skirmishers forced the entire line to shift over a little bit. Um, yeah, wow, that's, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe there's an artillery shot or two. Yeah, look yeah. at that. Well, was like, I can count ten on the, or not really ten, six on the ground. Probably a few more that despawned. This is a weird kind of game. I've, I don't usually see the Union push left, and it doesn't seem to be helping that much. And even on the left, they're not supporting their push for being aggressive. They're just holding seems back. Seems like there's uh, confusion there as well. They're trying to form a line and Took them a little uh, while to form a line. Yeah, that, that's a pretty good skirmish line, though, after they got it worked out. You know, this is more like the two different ranks of them, and the guys yeah. sitting from the other lines. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you ignore everything bad about it, it's really good. Which well, isn't that all that matters. That's how everything works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with, uh, with the Union over here on the right, we can see that still the Confederates are able to push back up into the open and just stay in line. Um, again, they're taking some losses, but remember, every loss they take here is one ticket. If they were kneeling or a little bit more spread out, they'd be in skirmishing, and that'd be much more uh, hurtful to them as defenders. Well, that guy had a deep voice. <laughs> you can see the 5th Florida holding behind the PA. The PA holding behind are now moving to the right of the 20th New York. Which, if I recall, the 20th North Battery's up there, so it looks like they're a little bit split up. The 24th George is holding the uh, center center of the map on these rocks. Uh, it looks like they were the main target of the Union push, but the Union were upwards of like 100 yards away, maybe 130 at some distances, um, so really weren't hitting much. And now the Union's over here on the uh, near the Union cannons on the center left, and maybe they're going to try to push in the center. Uh, it looks like like Sebi, this, this is a question for you, Sevi. Do you think the Union should have charged already? Like, do you think holding back and shooting will work instead of charging and blowing those rebel tickets? I think that on this map especially, charging is the most important thing for the Union. Just charge, yes, charge, yeah. charge, charge. Because if you charge the infantry and then the cavalry with their pistols, uh, you will win a you will win the melee. You know, and especially um, Union has more tickets, right? So they can afford these charges. Yeah, yeah. Like what we saw a few events ago, a few prep words ago, was that the Union just charged like three times in the right, lost every charge. But the next thing you knew, the Confederates are breaking. Um, that's the master of the ticket game, you know. Uh, where oftentimes, uh, what seems like a suicidal charge is actually a good way to drive down the defenders' tickets. Um, and even then, you might come out on uh, over top on kills because of uh, lasting and, and all that stuff. So, you know, it's not even that like you're suiciding your men. We can see some red mist over here. Let's see how densely they were packed. Uh, killed, like, oh, killed like three men. That's pretty impressive for uh, for artillery. Um, nice job there for the artillery. But, uh, now, the looks like realizing they're under threat by our artillery and infantry, the 5th North Carolina are falling back a little bit to their left, probably to find a better position behind a hill. We can see now, I think this is the PA. Yes, it's the PA. I have now pushed up to the center hill, the point hill, over the on the tree. Uh, the 
Ooh, the 24 Georgia pushing up really close to the Union line, sending volleys not very far away from them. Um, we can see over here that the uh, 20th Maine and the 6th Wisconsin are still continuing shooting at them. These guys are a little bit spread out now um, because they've the moved around area. so much. Hasn't really moved around at all. These mm -hmm. uh, Union regiments in the center. Yeah, so while the Union had to fall back on the left, their guys in the center are just being like kept in the same place by the Confederate advances. Very interesting. If the Union artillery were able to get one shot off right there, you would see a lot of Confederate deaths. But I think, ooh, maybe they're actually going to shoot the uh, infantry from once. Ooh, yes, they are. Let's see how well they did there. Red missed, but that doesn't tell us much. Uh, I, I can't really tell how many died. At least like three or four. Um, so nice shot. Definitely suppressed all those fuckers right there. It's kind of hard to see from far away. Have you seen many any good get. shots from the Rebel artillery yet? I haven't seen any really. Of yeah, I think that they've just been overshooting. Great artillery yeah. shot. Yes. Yeah, we know so the Rebel artillery always overshoots. Oh, they hit this one cannon. Oh. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Come on, Cannon! <laughs> can't you can't use it anymore. <laughs> Get yourself up, Cannon! <laughs> I, I love the Cannon flipping over. They and should never move another up. one as well. There's, oh, did they? another one on the ground, yeah. God damn it, I missed it. I only, okay, oh my gosh, yeah! No? And you can yeah. see, they're, they're, the it's Union's different. trying to hide one behind a tree. Really? I Am I blind? Yeah. No, no, you you, missed, you went over it. It's um by that big one big tree um to the left, left side. Left, left, left. Oh, oh! Look at that! Yeah, yeah, they're wheeling around the street. The the Clark's battery. Um, you know, all these artillery shenanigans. Uh, as fun as they are, I, I hate to say, it, but for one of these more competitive events, I don't think they're worth your time. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. at a certain point, maybe maybe it's just like send canister at the point. I don't know. I I, th I think sending canister at the point would be more effective at that point. Uh, and we can see here that from earlier, these skirmishers that were facing off against the uh, the big line had now been replaced by the PBs completely. So now this is the entire PB. It looks like facing off against the uh, fit or the eighth Con Con Connecticut. 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 I'm Kentucky's KY. Ah, so. uh, I know. I know. <laughs> I, I saw the CT and I thought Connecticut. And I was like, how do you say that word? Can you pronounce <laughs> Kentucky? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> So, oh, I was talking about earlier how they were trying to go behind some good hills for cover. This right here is, it doesn't look like much from afar, but this hill that the 24 George is behind, oh, oh losing like four men to artillery. That was impressive from the artillery. Um, these, these guys need to spread out a little bit more. That They were just offering that right on a silver platter. Nice shot from the artillery. Um, yeah, so that guy getting shot. What they should be doing, I think, is going a little more left and a little more center and forming up on like this miniature little ridge line right here, um, which doesn't look very good, but really does give you a little bit of cover, especially if you're kneeling. Um, which was a lot better back when the Confederates had sharp scarvings. Uh, for those who had the Gurkha event, you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> but you know what? It still is a pretty viable strat. Um, from far away now, it does look like the Confederates are losing some tickets, so maybe the Union strategy is going to pay off in the long run. Yeah, I think maybe the Union is relying more on their artillery, because artillery has gotten a few good hits, and the Rebels' artillery hasn't really yet. Mm -hmm. um, but perhaps the Union's waiting to get the Rebels down um, with... The artillery getting down to maybe engage before they charge, maybe taking losses too, but that would take a good mm -hmm. while if it's just artillery doing that damage. Ooh, finally somebody took up a more conventional push, and the AP's 20th Main has taken the center hill. Remember, this hill right here gives you a good death flight. Uh, it does leave you vulnerable to the artillery, but against enemy infantry, it is very good for cover. You can do a little uh, rise of and all that stuff. 24 but, Georgia moving in uh, to deal with them. Mm -hmm. the Didn't look like they had much on the right. And yeah, the 24 Georgia now facing off against them. So now it's two little skirmish groups facing off against each other. Um, that might last a long time. Now it looks like the main Union force has gone to the far Union right. Excuse me there. I've gone to the far Union right. Remember, this is the Nath Quad. Same Nath Quad that was over there on the far left at the beginning of the game. They've moved over here now, and they're now facing off against those Rockmen. Um, a much more conventional push, and you know what? I think if they uh, completely change to that kind of strategy, they might still have enough time to win. But who knows? Maybe the uh, the time that they wasted trying on the left push might give the Confederates the opportunity to win here. Only time will tell. On the Confederate position over here on the far Union right, um, 20th New York is holding. And again, I'm surprised the Union artillery isn't focusing this point. Um, it won't hit very much. The Confederates are touching the rocks. They're pretty much safe. But the Confederates are very spread out here with a lot of men. A, you know, artillery hit there would be very nice. The thing about artillery in this game, though, that I think is um, a point where these tactics of many groups doesn't uh, take advantage of artillery to its fullest, is that it's good at suppressing and clearing like five or six guys at once. But it's not good at bring tickets down. So like yeah. all those shots, they're, they're sure they're getting like four or five tickets, but that's not that much in the long run. Um, a charge would be more like around sometimes around like 50 if, if mm -hmm. you do it properly. And then again, you do have to lose some tickets in that as well. So it does take away. But 
And Union's I'm sure the attackers right are now, that. Yeah, exactly. In the Union's position, it, it would be better to get that charge and take that, you know, good good amount of tickets instead of having the already getting maybe four or five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if the artillery were to all focus on this point right as they charged and were to get like 10 kills with three different shots, um, that would be able to get have the Union take a point. Uh, I think that's what artillery would, uh, was intended for, was to assist charges in taking positions. Um, but that's not really how we see it used. We can see now the 6th Wisconsin has pushed up, forming a yes, skirmish so line. joined with the, uh, or has taken the positions of 20th Main. Yes, the Union hitting engaged first, out. though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely think that reflects how the game is probably going to go. Um, if the Union don't push the Confederate side to engage very pronto, the uh, they will lose the game. Um, I, I, I'm going to say that if they don't... I think if the Union don't get the Confederate sound to engage by 24 minutes or so, they uh, they don't really have much of a shot. And again, what we see here is that the Confederates are taking a big pounding of men. So, But all those losses right there is equal to one or two Confe Union losses because they're all kneeling. So their trade here isn't doing well. And we can see two con uh, Union corpses and we can see six Confederate corpses. That is even on tickets. Of course, being even on tickets is good for the attackers because they have more tickets, yada yada. Uh, but still, I'm sure the Confederates are happy to make that trade because although it benefits the Union in the long run, there's only 26 minutes left on the round, and they're still bad already. Yeah, so, Sevi, from, from you, you being a veteran player and me, I like to consider myself a veteran player as well. Um, I would too. Yeah, we, we see the strategies and of this of this map so far, and I think both you and me can agree that I don't think the Union's doing a great job at implementing certain strategies. Like, yes, they have the center, but right now it's looking very uh, dull and grim for the Union. Because now in that great center position, I believe Rebel Artillery can hit them there a lot mm -hmm. easier. So maybe that will play a factor. And That's probably why they're scared of moving more men there. Yeah, exactly. And the Rebs going around and taking volleys at them. Confederate Artillery now actually focusing on them, just as they said it. You know, speak of the devil, the devil cometh kind of thing. Are they, are they moving up? I think the 6th Wisconsin is charging. charging. With your with your revolvers, uh, well, you know what? Could, that that can work. <laughs> yeah, but they're all shooting into the dust. They're all uh, missing. Oh, oh, actually, oh, look at this. They're actually they're actually doing pretty well. This is. I, this I think is cool. I think the union will win this. Cause look, look, there's a bunch of them coming in now. It's like it's like yeah. a whole union charge happening. <laughs> that was fucking hilarious. That was great. Rebs shifting over now. You can see that to the east, north. Oh north my gosh! East. Yeah, entire. Entire Confederacy now charging in. Union now taking up the positions on the side of the artillery, and now they're going to fight for this hill. The Union are in control of point, but the Confederates now hitting engage. I think the Union have a chance here. This aggression right here is exactly what they need. So they just basically proved me wrong. Like I said, we have to, we, we said it before, um, it'd be great if the Union would go offensive, and it's already paid off. Mm -hmm. um, now the Rebs have abandoned their positions to go in. Mm -hmm. And remember, I think the con the Confederates are going to win this melee, but they will lose on tickets because any melee is bad for the uh, the defenders. You know, because again, that that last twenty five percent of tickets they, uh, where both sides are in breaking, that is where many games come down to the wire. Because being breaking for the attacker doesn't help the defender, but the defender being breaking it really helps the attacker. Yes, yes, yes. So now, yes, Confederates did sweep the Union there. Not a big surprise though, because the Union, uh, they all their cavalry died in the first five seconds, and half their men are armed. So actually, let's see the exact breakdown. The Union actually outnumbered the Confederates by around 12 men, um, but they have 18 men on artillery. That is obscene. That is way too much. I, I I'm gonna say that flat out. That is too many and men on artillery. Keep in mind that the Union still had that big unit to the far, far left. Union to the far left still holding, and, and the Rebs did oh have God, yeah. men there too. But I don't think, I think in that charge there, the Rebs did outnumber them in the mm -hmm. center, so. Yeah, maybe their coordination isn't, um, maybe, maybe they're not caring about, like, organizing the artillery and the infantry. Not to say that it's bad, you know, I, I hate to say it, but in most events, people don't really try to organize the artillery and the infantry. Um, but if you do were able to talk and actually organize, for example, if the artillery were able to, uh, if the Confederate artillery were able to place a shot into the Union right there, where as the melee began, um, they'd be able to do... Yeah, but instead, you saw them shoot the dirt when there was nobody there. Um, I think that many artillerists uh, or you know, and infantry commanders who are in command of their artillery groups, um, they don't see the benefit of having the artillery hold fire until the uh, until a certain position is crossed, you know? This and one and gets I many also shots think off it's the, the aiming is pretty tough. Like, I'm not an artillery yeah. man, so I wouldn't know. But it is, it, is, it is tough to use them. But I think we can all agree that counter-battery and shooting 
case shot at skirmish groups probably isn't the best use of your artillery. Yes. Yeah. Uh, however, the Union, remember, they also got wiped. So let's see how they're coming up from spawn. Um, coming up from spawn in some good order, uh, but it looks like... Where, where, where'd the cavalry go? I think the cavalry's already pushed up. I, I can't find them. Uh, I can see here that the ninth... Oh, yeah, there's Imperador, and where he is, the cavalry has to be near him, and yes, they are. They're on these rocks, back on these rocks. Uh, my, my game just slingshotted me forward there. Um, yeah, so they're back on these rocks. 22 minutes, both sides engaged. Definitely, this is better than most rounds of the confederacy uh but you know what if the union sneak out in 18 minutes or so taking losses uh they'll probably have it in the bag i think my tip to them would be is just go in for another charge why not uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know if you get them down to it just keeps going you get them down to take engage get them down taking losses then breaking and then last stand no more respawns boom that's it that's the game i agree completely that is uh definitely you know i i think that their use of their um the combined usage of all the regiments together could be improved. For example, if all of them charge these rocks, if all of the Union charge those rocks and mm -hmm. then their cavalry, yep. that would be extremely uh, good. But instead, it looks like they're, they want to charge their cavalry with their pistols in first. And what we saw was like four or five the of the shots. pistols. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, they died before they were able to get the shots off. Um, which doesn't sound that bad, but remember, that's six shots per person. Uh, even if you miss, if you miss a guy nearly, that guy is going to be really uh, ineffective in melee due to his suppression. It seems right there, um, you just missed it, but the uh, Union are trying to roll a cannon up towards the center. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, this is... Nothing uh, against the Ninth Corps, but I wouldn't think that's that's the best of decisions, especially how their ammo, their uh, caisson is, is very far away. Ammo, uh, ammo oh, bombs. this guy's yeah. rubbing the fucking ground now. His sword is fine above him, and now he's dead. Uh, this Mr. Recruit Patty is hiding, shocked in horror that his fellow recruit has died. And again, 18 men in artillery, I think, on an attacking map, 18 men is enough to win any melee. Like, if, if you outnumber the enemy group by even 9, you're going to win a melee, right? Um, Sometimes it doesn't even need yeah. to be outnumbering. Yeah, I've, seen, just needs, I've yeah. seen 6 men wipe 13 men, 12 men, you know, being yeah. double outnumbered. Mm -hmm. That just comes down to if they have shots, they fire the shots, they hit all the shots, and they win the melee. Yeah, that is a, there's a big charger bias in these rounds because um, a lot of guys oftentimes, like no matter how good of a group you have, there will still be men sitting there kneeling, in which case, if you didn't know, you can't melee for kneeling. Um, some yeah. cases, they'll still be reloading even when the enemy is on them. Like They, they won't even be like putting on the percussion cap. They'll still be ramming down the cartridge. Yes, the, the reaction so, time's not that great. <laughs> yeah, so... The, if the defenders are, well, it's hard to say, like, if the attacker is able to get to the enemy position um, with even nine-tenths of the enemy force, they're probably going to win a melee. Um, that isn't to say that it's always going to happen. There are better times. But yeah, we can see now that Mr. Vlad himself, the meme, the man, the legend, <laughs> is forming up over here. I This is no better of position than over there. And if anything, it's even worse because this is now closer than 170 yards. And, oh, Union charging. Hell yeah, hell yeah. That's a good move. They probably were Union playing on charging, charging at 20 minutes. That was probably their plan. They were probably sitting there court like, guys, charge at 20, charge at 20. And now it is 20. Now they're not. But that charge, charging. though, it's it's broken up. It's, it's not no, sticking horrible. together. Dude, so... they spread out so fucking much there. What the fuck was that? <laughs> it seems like that charge. charge. <laughs> that charge is not going to work out. The Rebs massed together and the Union spread out coming in one, one, one at a time is not really good. And oh the counter God. charge, I don't... Uh, it could be taken advantage of the counter charge um, if if the union pushes. This is now the union pushing in towards the center. If you can see that, ah uh, yeah yeah, yeah, the union are pushing into the center. That might have been their plan. But even then, they just lost like 20, 30 men. Now the uh, revs are spread out uh, a lot more than they should have been. Maybe the union can win this charge. But then again, the union is spread out too. So yeah, the union lost is... a lot of men there. I don't know. Like no matter how good of a position they just gained, I I don't. No, no, they lost completely. Yeah. That that was not a good charge at all. They the 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 first group to go in there on the far right. You saw how far they spanned out, yeah, right? Like they were all dying in skirmish. And, and now the, the Confederates pushed up. There's one guy hiding in a bush over here. Uh, Union alive? though, Union though, charging charging from the side from the southwest. Union a bit late. Charging. But yeah, a little, a little too late. And also Wonder, charging spread out. Not four really. guys in this cannon to yeah. uh, to manage it. It's like a Union job over here. And the Confederate cannon killing a man or two. Awesome. And it looks like the Union, whole Union team has basically been wiped out. Yeah, I'm a right-click now to see if there's any Union alive. Looks like just the artillerists. 
Um, that was, I'm I'm gonna go down and say it, the worst charge I've ever seen. That was horrible. <laughs> how how do how 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 do you plan that, <laughs> guys? Suicide thirty men and then charge the rest under the hill. Like what? <laughs> yeah, it it seems like the organization is not really there for the union as and the rebs the rebs also had little disorganization right there. You saw them counter charge and true. some charge right, but it seemed like the rebels were just a slightly more organized. Now imagine mm -hmm. if the Rebs were really organized and they like full front force that charge with everyone they have. Could have been a lot more deaths for the Union. Yeah, but especially in that line and stuff. Um, still, there were barely any Union that got out of that melee. I saw a couple of flag bearers. I don't see any down flag bearers. So at least the Union didn't lose their flags. Um, but now, yeah. Get those respawns up. Mm -hmm. But this isn't that big of a map, you know. I, if I were one of the com Union commanders, now, I would not be worrying about losing my flag because at some points it's almost better for you to lose your flag. Because then at least all of your men are spawning main, and you know where all of them are. Uh, speaking from experience, it can be very confusing when the commander spawns on main and like five guys spawn on flag. The Confederate volley over here, shooting at the artillerymen, not really killing anyone, but at the very least now they're suppressed and they won't be able to aim that cannon very well. Uh, I, uh, again, the generic, the very generic basic bitch thing to do is group all the men over here and on those rocks and then charge the far right. Instead of doing that, they're like, they're trying everything else. They're trying to avoid doing the tried and proven first move strategy. Uh, I think that they're just trying not to give it to the meta. But even then, taking this rocks by itself isn't just like, it's not a meta. It's just like, it's a great point to take. Even though that charge was bad, though, not lo it's not looking good for the Union. But I think they could still pull off a win if, if they get their act together. Like, it's totally, so? it's not, it's, I, I, I think it's not over yet. I think it can be, I think it can be, uh, it can be turned around. Um, but I guess. If, if they do the same thing, no, mm -hmm. it just, it depends on how, how they want to react to, to the strategy that's been implementing. Uh, mm -hmm. because if, if they realize, oh shoot, this didn't really work out. Why should we do it again? You know, they have to do something mm -hmm. else now that can be taken two different ways. Oh, now we won't charge ever. Or yeah. Let's charge together. Cause I've seen that done before where, where units are like, all right, let's charge. And the charge goes terribly. And they're like, all right, let's not charge when you really do have to charge. Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree less there. Uh, oh, I couldn't agree less. I couldn't agree more there. Sorry. <laughs> um, the, yeah, the... Oh, my God. Now the charge in the center? I mean, maybe this will work. Maybe this will work. Maybe we'll get the Confederates off charge. But they just walked in front of their friendly line now. And like they're charging they're in the center. More mass stuff together, but... Yeah, okay. We'll this is them. a slightly more grouped up charge. The Confederates charging in the rear. If the unit are able to secure this position, what the fuck are they doing? They're holding back? Yeah, they're holding. They're holding. And they're volleying a different group? Dude, this is... They're not even charging. Like, they don't even want to charge. Look at them, they're letting themselves get flanked Rebs over out. there. Yep, yep, getting flanked now. Union completely yep. got wiped there. Union didn't even, like, the group on the rocks did not even come in to support them. And if they come in now, it'll be too late. Union, however, do push them down a lot, taking losses. Um, again, it that seems is... like there's confusion, though, at the rocks, though, back where the Union is. They're, like, trying to debate, oh, should we go in or should we not? Oh. So you see, like, kind of a couple walked up and a couple walked back. Now the Rebs countercharging them. Yeah, remember, the <laughs> players can get to these rocks. It seems really far forward, but they can go all the way to the rocks. Union now hitting breaking. Yeah, that, um, yeah. Well, Union Charge, though, you can, I don't know if you can see it, but it's coming from the southwest now again. Just a small, small Union. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. That is, uh, that, they're actually charging in. What are they trying to do, die? The seventh mass. Yeah. Now, a little bit too late, a little bit, I mean, like a minute and a half too late. And, uh, looks like they're just going to get wiped now. Um, yep. But these, you know what? I, I can see if the uh, if the Confederates really drop the ball here, if the Confederates really allow the Union to uh, get forward on the cap point, um, the Union could sneak out an overtime win. Remember when? Uh, oh yeah. I, I yeah. Still remember forever ago, like like a year ago, winning this map just barely oh, on yeah. overtime. Um, that was uh, that was the event that really uh, that the awesome. trickle on the point thing. Also than that before, I think I was leading an event where um, it looked very very grim for us. We were like. Final push, maybe a minute left, and we just got the Rebs to hit breaking, and we just kept charging, kept contesting yep. the point, we kept getting overtime, and we actually got them to last stand, and we eventually took it. And I'm saying Union casualties were a lot higher. Yeah, you still you still win. A win is a win is a win unless it's um a campaign or something where casualties mm -hmm. do matter. Yes, I remember Hills counter attack game, um very similar to that, where yeah we just end up with streaming, streaming, streaming on a point in a uh. Or no, was it Hills Counterattack? Oh, I can't remember. I, whatever. I, I could probably think an hour and a half on events where we've done that kind of strategy. One um, of the games. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of those games forever ago. Uh, and yeah, the 
what I was trying to say earlier was that I, I agree really with your uh, with your thing that a lot of groups they'll they'll lose a charge and then they'll take the wrong conclusions out of yes, it. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Where I um, mean, yeah. Yes, you know, Sevi did teach me how to play the game very like four years. No, it was like three years ago, yeah. long time ago. But um, yeah, we, we have the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do have the same strategies in mind. Mm -hmm. Um, so we do have an agreement with a lot mm -hmm. of things. Yes, and uh, you know what? I, I think that these groups that are on the, the field, they're doing really well on the melee and really well on the shooting. Um, but I think that the Union, I don't, I don't think that the strategies are dumb. I think they're just trying to do something new, which you really can't fault too much for that. But at the same time, it's not working, and they should be trying the uh, what's always worked, you know? And what's always worked is pretty much any offensive that if it ends up in taking those rocks, you win the game. Like, from there you can go over there and flank around yeah. these hills. From there you can push up there. It It's not like it's like very linear like you do this and you do this and that's the meta it's um you know it gives I, I you think options you, once you yes. take that right side mm -hmm. which is the comparison control that you really don't have uh union now massing up uh, behind this hill remember the artillery and the infantry connected them back here so they're probably trying to group up pl try to plan a uh a charge in their steam call and uh, before they push up there onto the point um I they're not arguing though in that steam call I mean, yes it can happen a lot though <laughs> a lot of arguments happen but at least they're they're holding back and not taking casualties now but they gotta move out soon or else they're just losing time yes the biggest enemy of the attacker isn't the uh, the enemy's bullets but it's a timer in this game it's not even the uh, their own tickets because you know oftentimes you'll see uh what, what i like to say is that if the attackers don't hit final push it's as if they always had infinite tickets you know because yep. it does not make a difference for the attackers until the exact moment they hit final push so uh, oftentimes you'll see the attackers be a little bit too uh, stingent with their tickets, and you'll see them lose a game, but still being at like taking losses. Now, um, we're so not going to see that here. Go to the uh, point, and um, you know, just just look above. Oh, you have no bodies on. But from my point of view, there's a lot more blue, dead blue bodies instead of gray. I, you know, I do have like 25 on. Um, but yeah, you're right. I, I I'm a little bit running on potato. Um, so I can't have more than like 50 without prison frames. Oh my god, yeah, there's a, a lot of eyes over here, and yeah, just like you said, lots and lots of blue. Um, there's some gray in there, but, you know, the Union definitely lost more in that melee, ticket-wise and loss-wise in the Confederacy. Union now pushing up into the center. Their plan is probably just not going into action. And the AP's 20th main is leading the spearhead. I think they're way too spread out, though. Uh, like, you can they see are. just how spread out they are. There's like, it's like a 20-second from top tip finish the confederate charging in their rear uh if they were smart a lot of these guys would right face right now but they're not there's and a lot of charge the flank. right side the north charge yes i uh oh confederates though you know what they just have to do a volley not killing very many remember it's very hard to hit a group that's even they're this spaced out but it's very hard to group that might give the union enough time to win the melee we can see on that the seventh massachusetts they didn't miss the melee this time nice job on them rebs are charging in though all rebs charging in Yes, yes, yes. There's uh, more than 230 people now on the server. This is a relatively large server, so it's very hard to see exactly oh, yeah. what's happening um, player to player. But from this over eye view, we can see that the Union seem to be losing to the Confederacy. It's hard to call it this early, though. They definitely have less men on point, though. So now the Confederacy now charging into the Union's rear, and it looks like the Union's retreat has been cut off. However, the Union hold the top of this hill and are going in. The last few of them who, who survived are now trying to melee and uh, avenge their fallen comrades. Um, Union now no, hitting final push. No. That yeah. But but the Remington Rebs are not that far away from hitting breaking. So I think hypothetically Rebs, yes. Yeah, I think what Union has to do now is just get bayonets on, not even worry reloads, group up mm -hmm. another mass charge and keep going. I would almost say that a stream on point right now is warranted because what uh, what Tristanium said is that the final push makes it so you have just enough time to run from main to point twice. So these guys, literally, if they're just not spawning in, they have less. They don't have enough time for two charges. Um, so either they could stream on a point and try to get a overtime, in which case they would have a lot more time, or they could uh, try to group up and make one good charge. And I, I hate to say it, but oftentimes when people try to do one good charge, it just ends up where half the guys don't have reloads, and they're just as spread out, if not more, than earlier charges. So, you know, we'll see what happens, but I uh, I don't think they have a good chance if they try to go in with a uh, organized well, I saw that most units at the Union spawn did get reloads, oh. so good waste of time. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Maybe they can pull it out somehow, but I yeah. think it's a waste of time. I, I think that the Union definitely wasted too much time at the beginning of the game, and now they're seeing here, uh, even before the final push, they had less than 10 minutes left. 
Um, so, you know, the, the really, it wasn't the final push that was going to go in their coffin. It was the waste of time at the beginning where oh, yeah. they gave up their initiative in trying just to do something cool. Um, I almost think it would have been better just to, to push up in the center hill over here. So I, I've seen a couple of videos, and it seems like the Rebs win most of the time. Is, is that true? I think it depends from event to event, but it does seem like the Rebels, where they used to be losing a lot, because um, most of the maps used to be favoring the attackers, I think the larger player counts is helping the Confederates, because there's more Confederates defending. I think we'll see that in Ducker Church, too, where the Union just won't that be able seems, to break through. No, the Union has, I think, more numbers than the Rebs. Only by two, though. Yeah, so. yeah, but what I mean to say is that on uh, smaller player counts, the attackers would always be able to find a weak point in the Confederate line. Uh, but oh, yeah. now, almost all the points on the Confederate line are strong points. We can see now that there are two attack columns. Um, one of the attack columns is going to the center right and is charged by the 20th main. The other attack column is the 9th Corps' attack column. They're facing off against a giant unified rebel line on this point around the rocks. And the Confederates oh, were not on no. it yet. Are, oh, Yes, those artillery shots killing at least five. And the men who survived it are now suppressed. Uh, I think suppression is a bigger factor for artillery than kills or anything. Um, Ooh, the, another I, artillery shell. Don't yeah, that. Again, the uh, Union charge, I think, two spread outs actually do much against the massive Confederates. Um, like I said earlier, the That's Confederates just have a though. slight amount of uh, more organization. Yeah. Union stopped the charge. They did push Rebels on the Confederates. Hitting breaking. Breaking. Yep. Yes. So, uh, you know, the Confederates didn't completely uh, steamroll the Union. They did get pushed on to breaking. Um, but, you know, the uh, the Union really... I don't think they played their, their cards the, well, the best there. The the, the, uh, the pistol charge there in the middle was pretty cool, though. You know? What do you think the casualties are going to be? I imagine the Union probably has around 100 more. Nothing too I'm... crazy, but enough to make a difference. Yeah, I think the uh, Rebs are going to have around 400, and the Union's going to have uh, uh -oh. 700. 400 to 700, do you think? Uh, you know it's what? a little too much. It's a little too much, but possibly. this is a 200 person event, so each person dying twice doesn't sound that bad. You know what? I, your prediction sounds similar. I I would guess it's a little bit closer to like a Confederate 500, Union 600. Yeah, possibly. But yeah, we'll see in a couple seconds. Yeah, that was a that was a fun first round to watch. Um, we'll start with Sevy and then do Drake. What were you guys' thoughts about the first round? I thought that the uh, this is the generally the. Uh, community considers this a union biased map and I would have to generally agree with that assessment um, but I think that recently as player counts have increased it has become a little bit easier for the defenders and I think that combined with the uh, the union trying something new that didn't work out um, lets the union losing so yeah those are my two cents alright thank you Savvy Drake what are your thoughts I think early game really messed up the union they had to charge in more and they had to be more organized and good job for the Rebs, keeping it a uh, little bit more organized in the Union, and they did work well with each other on these charges. All oh, right. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. You're going to be right. Uh, Damn it. Damn oh, it. I was right. You ah. were almost exact. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, 468 to 704. Man, that was a lot worse than the Union than it really looked. Yeah. So yeah, I'm the Dunker Church now. If you didn't know, you can hold tab in between the changing, and it'll tell you what the admins set the next server to, because it doesn't tell you in the middle. Yeah. It's... Something about the um, War of Rights, uh, I guess developers saying they're gonna you can be able to skip this uh, this cutscene. What do you what do you think about the, the um, skipping? I think scene? I think if they make it a server setting, that'll be fine. Yeah. Um, but I really hope that they make it so that public servers won't be able to disable it. Because I think that a huge part of the charm about this game is its historical accuracy. And it'd be a big shame if new players just weren't yeah. able to see this because we got bored of it, you know? Well, yeah. So, no, I, th I, th also, I think that's also good, um, having a skippable in the server settings and then pubs, uh, public games being open yeah. to this cutscene. I can see the counter-argument, though, that that'd be really hard to implement. Um, but, you know, I, I really do think that the... Uh, in general, that the um, public servers, people shouldn't be allowed to be banned for more than six hours. Like, that's kind of BS how, like, you know, you can just kick somebody off war rights, basically, until their server goes down. So. Yeah. So, okay. So now this is Dunker Church, just not entering spectating. Remember, it is around 4.30 now um, because of how the game works now. The... Uh, six Wisconsin is still top A. They're taking the 72nd Pennsylvania. It looks like they completely forgot that the second round has a top regiment B company, and they're not caring to fill it up. So it looks like Cream Pie is taking 
a single uh, position. Um, 20th, 28th Pennsylvania is taking up. Th they should probably get the officer for that, though. An extra pistol could be good in a charge. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. And while we're looking, this is remember this Dunker Church over here is the Mumma Farmstead, which will be a slightly more important thing in the conquest mode because a couple of the points are near this area, which you don't see any fighting near in in game, um, except if on Cook's Counter Charge sometimes you see Union along that fence right there. Uh, but yeah, the Confederates burned down that farmstead so that it would not be of use to Union sharpshooters uh, during the battle. Uh, they burned down it around the same time as the Eastwood skirmish was going on, and yeah, it was still on fire during the battle. And that is the giant plume of smoke you see over the entire game in most maps. So now the Union should just now be finishing the reels and bayonets. Let's uh, let's see how they're forming up here. So it looks like they're just not getting to their groups, uh, planning a moving between Jamin and holding their, uh, his regiment's flag. And the rest of the men, I yell a lot of march orders. And the 6th Wisconsin is moving to the right flank. And said, if you go to the Rebs, it seems like they're taking a standard defense. You know, a couple on the far right, a couple on the far left. Maybe, yes. a, maybe a small regiment in the center. Yeah, this, yeah you're right, this is very standard. This is, um, you know, one of the charms of early war rights that I feel like is missed is that the Confederate, the scramble, was that, like, back when it was, like, 75 to 75, they would all be holding up here on this fence, right? And then they would see the Union all go to one of the flanks, and they would all be like, shit, they're going left. And, and you shift all by everyone in case, kind of like, oh, oh, they're shifting, let's move back the other way, you know, they yeah, just exactly. follow each other. I remember, I remember one time. days. I remember one time being so happy at a 150 person server. And anyways, I just had the lines zigzag over this area right here. Um, and the Confederate line is moving back and forth countering us. It was hilarious. Um, but you don't see that anymore because now the Confederates can take up every position they want with over 200 men on the server. It means that they have 116 men in their regiment. Um, the Union now have a small skirmish line, the AP's 20th Main. Um, and they're just not even 40 yards from the Rebels, but neither side knows it. I so can it hear seems dead sound. like for the Union, they got no one really going far right yet possibly one unit will be going but it's... yes you're right I, I think that unit there if they were smart they'd go to the far right um not to say that they'd be dumb if they didn't but I, that's just what i would do um but who knows maybe they're gonna try to push up the center but remember the center leaves you open from uh from fire if they were to charge the center here this is the nipple it's a very good position to hold the point from but it's a prerequisite to hold that point they have to kill the rebels around it if they took that point, they'd be being shot from there and from there we can see now over this hill the first major engagement of the battle might be a charge? Yes, yes, the AP 20th Main is pushing out forward to do a little rising volley on him, losing like half their men before they even get a shot off, and didn't kill a single man. You know, I gotta say, <sighs> rising volleys aren't that good. Like, <laughs> people don't realize how inaccurate they are when they're doing rising volleys. You need going in straight into the center. Ooh. They're already charging the nipple. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. That will leave them surrounded, though, I think. But they, they will be able to get and some good kills And they're not even supported, each. though. It, it seems like no unit has come to support them. And they got a direct shot in from the artillery. The artillery just hit them right. Uh, Flag burst suiciding himself. Now it looks like he's running. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, now he's dead. Oh, well, he's. Yeah. <laughs> we saw there that the Union did get in flanked completely and circled. Um, now there are no Union on the Union right, Confederate left. And the Confederates are seeing that and moving all their forces available to the center. Again, well, I don't look think. Look to the uh, far, Confederate far right. Um, there's a Union. Unit pushing up, but it's getting yes. dealt with by another Confederate regiment. Yeah, the North Corps is now engaging in a shootout with. Let's see what Rebel Regiment this is over here. This is the 24th Georgia. So the 24th Georgia is in a shootout with the um, North Corps alongside their brothers in the uh, Pickett's Brigade. And I and see, now, and I assume the Rebs are going to win this because they have uh, fence cover and the Union just right out in the open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the long run, the Confederates will uh, statistically at least win that uh, win that shootout. Um, some groups would like to say that they're better uh, uh, sharpshooters than the rest, but who knows? Oh, they're holding up on the fence. If you didn't know, fences don't stop bullets. Fun fact today. Uh, and it said both sides are now shooting over here, fence to fence. You saw how suppressed my camera got there. Imagine how suppressed they are. I'm um, losing significant men in this shootout. The Confederates, you know, one advantage. Oh my gosh, they're they're placed perfectly where each man is on a fence post. Um, the fence post is pretty much the only part of the fence that can theoretically stop a bullet. It doesn't always, but it can, especially if... Yeah, you saw it right there. It stopped that bullet. Um, that man, it should have killed that man. Um, but, yeah. The now, Union... What the, yeah, yeah. What, what the Union just did, though, the charge in the nipple, I think it was a great idea early game. It's just they had to be supported by... Every unit had to do that because you saw the Rebs had almost everyone there and Union just had maybe one mm -hmm. regiment, maybe two, maybe one, just basically one group go up there by itself, get directly hit mm -hmm. by an artillery cannon, and then get swamped from both sides. Yes, yeah, so the 9th Corps now falling back on the Union's left push, leaving a trail of bodies in their wake. 
Uh, definitely not a good or organized push. The Confederates now shooting into the 20th Maine's flank. Uh, again, this is a good kind of flank, but you're at an angle, not at a exact uh, parallel. Um, so they will be able to hit very accurately and very suppressively. The Union might be trying... Oh, they're not. Okay. You know what? I would have thought these guys would try to like go really far right and try to juke around them. But instead, they're going right to the center, right where the Confederates already are, and where the Confederates already hold better ground. Um, look at, at... By the way, this is one of the sections where the map really isn't deceiving. There really is just a large section of land that the Union have to cover uh, and sprint over to the uh, Confederates. It's only around 70 yards at some point, maybe even closer than 40 uh, from like there to there. Um, but you know what? Even with Union artillery now hitting the, uh, the Pickett's Brigade and 24 Georgia line, um, the Union... They would need to do a lot to win here. Uh, I think this is an, uh, one of the effects of larger servers. It's just that the defenders, not that they have an easier time, but they have an easier time holding more positions than they used to. Fun fact, I'm actually going to visit Antietam uh, this Ooh. this next weekend. Um, Lucky. So, so yeah. You well, fucking already, Easterners. Yeah, I'm already driving down south. And I was like, hey, I'm going to be passing. I'm going to be passing here, so might as well visit. Man... Antietam's pretty cool. I've been there. I've been there once. It was it was a beauty. Yeah, both of you guys are gonna be able to have gone to Antietam, and I'm just sitting here having to look at pictures online. She <laughs> Just go to Google Maps. Do yeah, a, I guess go to a guy. Guy. <laughs> Remember the little girl on top of the pick on top of the post at a uh, the six nine New York marker? Oh yeah 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 yeah. I'll have to show I'll have to show uh, Google that. Yeah, yeah. I think we were with Coco when we found that. <laughs> yeah, 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 because because we named we named the emo we made it Coco. I remember now. If if, if any of so, you watching this stream ever uh, have Nitro, uh, do colon Coco colon, and then it should have the uh, the image I'm talking about. If you're in the FB server, it seems like Union has a little less artillery men now. Actually, maybe around 14 artillery instead of 18. Mm -hmm. Six Wisconsin pushing up onto the 20th New York's position, taking some losses, a significant losses due to Buck and Ball, and ultimately I think the Six Wisconsin is going to lose that. Um, I saw like their officer and like three of their men go down within like a half a second due to two or three Buck and Ball shots, um, which again Buck and Ball at very close ranges goes without saying is very effective. I'm having some uh, stuttering now. My frames are just halved uh, with a ooh that's a pretty nice uh, red mist, but not very many kills over here on the nipple. Remember, this is, uh, that's actually what they say in real life. If you don't know what the thing that the percussion cap goes on, it wasn't called a percussion cap holder. It was called a nipple. People back then were very perverted. <laughs> so, yeah. The Confederates falling back into the fence. Um, this has the, uh, of course, it stops a couple more, it, it stops a couple bullets, right? I'm not, you know, it doesn't stop none, but it's very low. But it has the very added benefit of making the Confederates almost blend in. Um, their uniforms look almost the same shade of brown as the uh, the fence line. So if you look at my screen right now, this is about what the Union would see if they pushed up here. It's very hard to see exactly where the Confederates are, especially two fence lines back. Um, if you zoom in, obviously, we'll see infantrymen can't do it. It becomes more obvious. But the infantrymen can't out zoom in. So, you know, they don't have that advantage. Oh, your microphone's kind of fucked. I just heard something about one of these groups going over and helping the 7th math, quote-unquote. 7th math, I'm sorry, it's 7th math. Um, so, as I was saying before, though, it looks like Union's doing what they're doing last round, just kind of holding back, not really working together. Mm -hmm. All the Rebs seem all on top of each other. Well, not really on top of each other, but they seem to be working better yes. together. It looks like when the Union charges one of the Confederate groups, everybody else is very quickly moving to support them um, and moving into charge and join the melee. Uh, which numbers in melee is the most important thing, not just because you want to win the melee, but because it makes your men die less in skirmishing out of line. And, uh, you know, that is the worst part of melee for the defenders is skirmishing out of line. So if they're able to have more men in there um, and not only win, but also maintain their tickets, uh, they have a great chance. You and you're just in a shootout now on this fence line. Uh, this is less than 50 yards away. Confederates, if they are shooting Buckingham, which they really should be, um, will be suppressing the Union. Uh, with those low shots, that tells me that they probably are shooting Buckingham. And yeah, I can hear the Buckingham shots going on. Looks like a lot of them are shooting it, um, which, if, again, even though which they're, they're killing a lot of guys there, like a lot yeah. of men, but the men who survive and the men who uh, you know try to fire another shot in retaliation and to save the rest of them, they won't be able to do much. Um, once, I was a Union in this situation i would probably fall back i think their plank is exposed and they're not really getting any support so i would mm -hmm. move back maybe 
to another death lead, maybe going more left, or maybe just in general, maybe falling all the way back, grooving up with another regiment. Yes, yes. I uh, I think that I agree with that. The Union right now, I think their best position would be to all fall back to his fence line and then to group up completely as one entire group and to charge any of these flanks. If they grouped up completely and charged uh, and had the numerical advantage in the melee, they'd have a great chance at winning. The Confederates are taking some bloody losses here, and it is still 33 minutes. Who knows what we'll see. Um, I think that this game will be decided by whoever it hits engage first. I, uh, unless the Union really pull a, a hat out of, or a, a rabbit out, excuse me, <laughs> Chinese food gives me the hiccups. Uh, unless the Union pull a rabbit out of their hat and, you know, or something magically magic out of their ass, uh, the Confederates are going to win this one, hands down. Confederates have the gumption to charge out this uh, 6th Wisconsin and PA reinforcement group with their bucking ball, they're just massacring them. Nice job. Looks like the 20th New York and the 1st MD are the ones who did that. Uh, pretty good move there. Pretty good move there. Well, now if you look, the um, they left the center kind of exposed. So Union yeah. could take the center. Oh my god, look at a few properly. Union men. They're over here. Well, There's yeah. like, it's like 20 guys down here. Oh my god, not even. There's like 15 alive. This is... They're literally decimated. Now, decimated what in historical could context help means the Union is if they move far right now. And the Union far right and get a good flank without them being spotted, because there's yeah, yeah, yeah. just no rebs on the far on the far rebel left Union right. There's no rebs there. Mm -hmm. um, so. Right. If if the Union like they can stay there, right? Because they they couldn't get to the uh, Confederate left, the Union right without being seen. But if the reinforcements all went to the far right, they uh, they'd stand a good chance at flanking them. Um, we can see now the fence. I had my render distance. I guess it was a bit low. I guess it's Minecraft now. Um, but this fence line is, if you didn't know, exactly 180 yards from the top of that hill, which sounds like a far range, but that really, all that really means is shoot top the uh, top of the shoulders, um, maybe even at the head, uh, if you're being risky. Uh, but, you know, there's not as much bulge up as people think is what I'm trying to say. The Now, the Confederates, they really feel confident now, and they're pushing up into the center on top of this hill in order to keep the Union where they are. They do not want any flank maneuvers, but Union retreating. I think this is a good move. I think that if they uh, take advantage of this, they can turn this into a good thing. I'm almost surprised the unit hasn't hit engaged yet. They've been being curb stomped the whole game. Oh yeah, maybe perhaps. I mean, probably know their charges and and deaths could have been in formation, so the chances of them getting a lot more tickets lost is is lower. But uh, I don't know. I mean, the skirmish yeah, deaths in the middle. Like I just saw one man die in line. There's a guy reloading in the open in clear view of the Confederate troops. Uh, I'm not going to dox him, but let's go I see what his name is. Some... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a volunteer. <laughs> he's yeah, a okay. new player. He's yeah, a he's new, new player. player. Okay, you know what? And he also has the luck of new players in that he's able to get away. So, you know what? <laughs> it, it all works out. out. It all works out. <laughs> out. Um, <laughs> not going to dox him. Let's go see what his name is. Oh, my gosh. I remember, remember having a funny moment. Oh, you hitting engaged. I... Yeah, I think that's a. You know, I wouldn't, I'm not going to say it's a done deal, but I don't have much faith in their ability to come back from that. Um, by the way, Piper Farm. Fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you know, I just. To be honest, I, I'm such a nerd that. I mean, I've, I've set the IVV server to, uh, to Skirmish and just, like, flown around different maps and just, like, looked at how the developers model so, certain areas. Not that much combat happening right now. It seems like games are just trying to reorganize. So. What do you think developers, what do you think the plan for the game is? What do you think the developers are thinking, like, what do they want to implement into their game? Because they have a beautiful game, the graphics and everything. Mm -hmm. It looks almost realistic, like. Yeah. Um, and if, if, you, if you've been to Antietam, it, it's exactly the same. It looks so similar that it, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's incredible how they did it. I I think that the developers are probably going to try to uh, flush out conquest mode, and I think that'll be where they keep off um, uh, the game modes. I think they're going to try to you know polish up conquest, and then fix pick patrol, um, and then from there on, I I what I expect is that they might try to do more maps. Um, and you know what? I think if they have a solid conquest and a solid skirmish and a solid pick patrol, um, those are the only real three game modes I can think I'd like. You know, historical mode, if I said this uh, a couple times in text chat, but just to get it out there on uh, on the record, the developers have said a few times that their original vision and the original uh, versions of skirmish mode were 16 v 16. So this 231 person battle here, uh, which isn't even that big of a uh, an event compared to other events that we've had, yeah, yeah. Um, this is closer to historical mode than they were. I, I think that they were ever expecting. Um, so you know, I I, I can see the, uh, the developers doing a lot of different things, uh, but I don't expect the uh, well. I think if conquest mode is able to be flushed out so that everyone likes it and uh, it gets to be 
not, I'm not gonna say that it isn't fun now, but if it gets to be uh, competitive, then you know what? I think that'll be good for the uh, the game mode aspect of the development. So yeah. So this is not what I think, but I think this is what I've I've talked to people before, and some say that War Rights is is done. I think they say they're gonna push out this conquest, and then that's it, because. In, in in the patch notes, we've seen them say, oh, we're just going to keep with the Maryland campaign, which is Antietam, Harvest Ferry, South Mountain, and then hopefully uh, Shepherdstown, am I right? I think Shepherdstown, yeah. Yeah, so, um, just that. But, you know, it would be nice to see War Rights pushing out new maps um, and pushing mm -hmm. out new things, like hopefully Cavalry. I've been waiting for several <laughs> several <laughs> years now. But, um, First New York Mounted Rifles. Ugh, yeah. Yeah. I uh, I agree with that. I think that well, I, I don't agree with that, but I've heard that sentiment too. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, but like in my in my opinion, I don't think it's like done. I just think that the uh, the niche for this game isn't able to support multiple 400 player servers at once. And I think that the uh, the you know because it's a civil war first person shooter, a multiplayer, yeah. extremely realistic with the suppression system and ticket system. I hate to say it, but that's that doesn't exist. And, and you know uh, it, it is. It is taking around, you know, the Civil War period, Confederates, you know, yeah. we know what we they did, we know what they fought for. Mm -hmm. So, it, not really a lot of players are going to be drawn to this game. I mm -hmm. mean, it could put me I wrong. Love it. This I game, love it. Yeah, I know, this game could blow up, and for all we know, we can see, <laughs> we'll see, like, 800-person servers. Yeah, 800-person <laughs> servers, you know, we'll see, possibly, maybe. Roblox. <laughs> but, but... You know, we'll see how it yeah. goes, but there was a, a little Confederate and Union charge going on. Yeah, it's really weird how they're staying really close range. Oh, Union now, person now, like, Confederate's engaged, like, five minutes late? Oh, it's... That's, that's still... Yeah. 26 minutes engaged. That, it could that's, be worse, I guess. Yeah, it, it could be worse, but, you know, typically you want to have the Reb, uh, Rebels hitting engage around 30. You know, that's, that's... Preferably like, even sooner than that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, in general, I'm sorry for uh, for for not like I was rambling on there a lot. But what I was trying to say was, um, I don't consider 180 people on and downtimes dead. And as long as we uh, keep our expectations not of a thousand player servers, but of like community events that are engaging and fun, like what we see here, like every single weekend, um, mm -hmm. I think that the game will last uh, a long time. So yeah, because I I personally have fun with this. I had fun with this game when it was 30 v 30s, you know, in like dead skirmish rounds on Fridays. And I, I had fun with it when it was 75, 75, and having fun with it at 100, 300. Um, but you know what? I I just don't think it'll be practical to have multiple servers of 200 v 200. Yeah, guys, share. Whoever's watching this, buy the game, share the game. Share, <laughs> share, share. Share the game. It's a phenomenal game, yeah. Share it around, I, man. I cannot say how much I would literally kill, man. Not really. But join you know I mean? organized. And join any of these regiments. Join organized uh, yes. regiments. Because their links are the in the game. description. Yeah, yeah, it does does keep the game refreshing and and likable, and it cuts mm. down on uh, toxicity a lot. Yes, that that's true. Um, definitely, I feel like the majority of the action against again, obviously, that flag is very controversial, and a lot of the guys who uh, you know, I'm I'm not gonna say every, like it's nowhere near everybody. It's a vast majority of Confederates who are great people to talk to, great people in, in general. Um, but there's a couple people who just want to hop on and, you know, say racial slurs and all that stuff. And just like how there's people who want to hop on and say really cringy, you know, Sherman memes, um, you know, there's a, <laughs> it's, it's two sides of a similar but much very different coin um, in that, you know, it's, uh, nobody really wants to see that. Nobody really wants to see the, uh, the swear, or the, you know, the racial slurs and nobody really wants to see the cringy Sherman memes. So, you know, there's a little bit of both there. Uh, but the major action against the, uh, all the stuff it's, I, I, that I've seen, I agree with you. It's come from the regimental side of this community, um, mm -hmm. where yeah, all the crackdown against that stuff to make this game um, enjoyable for everybody, you know. So yeah. Although I, I guess it is also kind of uh, kind of funny the roleplay aspect of it, but you know, I'm, I'm not going to go you know uh, on that rabbit hole because it's uh, the roleplay aspect of public games and uh, you know in the middle of these games is funny. Like whenever whenever I get mixed up with a uh, a different line. And like if like for example if my line was over here on the far right and my flag was over there and actually spawned in um you know we would be chatting all that stuff like there's role playing regimental games but it's just like yeah, yeah yeah i love this game i fucking there's a reason i have 2.5k hours in it right so yeah 
Alright, back to back to the action. <laughs> yeah, well, what lie. action, right? They're not fucking charging. <laughs> ah! <laughs> these Union men, the, both these rounds, I, uh, you know, I, I think this is, again, one of the aspects that makes the, uh, the game a little bit easier going on higher player counts is that regiments tend to be um, either 10 to 15 or 20 to 30 people. Uh, and the story what we see here is that the Union team has like five different regiments on it. Um, and it might be very hard to convince uh, if like one of those commanders wants to charge and the others don't, or even if one of the commanders doesn't want to charge, you're not going to win a charge. Uh, there's almost, um, in these larger battles, there's a lot of cooks and only one kitchen. So, you know, back, back in the day, back in the old day when you would have like, you know, instead of one server of 300 up, you'd have three servers of 100. Um, it would be, you'd see a lot more decisive action uh, from the attacking team, which again, you'd, I, I think this is a prime example of why you don't see that as much on uh, regimental games of a larger caliber. The defenders, um, they work extremely well if they're all in groups of like a mean of 20, they, they have a big you know, uh, variation of that. But like, uh, around 20 group, uh, 20 man groups, a little bit spread out, and all they gotta do, the only coordination they have to do is, guys, I'm being charged, okay, everybody else charge, you know? Uh, but there has to be a lot more coordination to actually successfully do an attack. Um, so, while I would say that below like 150 players, this game is generally very attacker biased. I think up here, these maps almost flip to be more defender biased. Not to say that they are completely defender biased, because, you know, they still get like raffle stomped on maps like, you know, uh, Nicodemus So, for example. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but the uh, a, a good strategy can't really fail Nicodemus So. Um, and then people try to like change it up by like one step and just lose completely. But whatever. Uh, I have whatever. I, I have a lot of uh, controversial opinions about a few different maps. But yeah. So the Union again, Six Wisconsin. I think I'm gonna try to do again. Rising volleys. If you haven't seen, don't work. The rising volleys. You will. Yeah, sure. Get your shots off, but you're not gonna hit jack shit. You can see now killing maybe one or two. Oh, that guy's freaking out. I love seeing uh, you know, low physics bodies freak out. But yeah, the defending team there. Um, pretty much only killing the Confederates dumb enough to push too far up. The ones who are actually sitting behind rocks are doing a great job at holding off the Union with great buck and ball. However, maybe it was a distraction for this other group. Whose group is this? This is the Ninth Corps. If the Ninth Corps were to up and over to their left here, they would have a great flanking fire on the Confederate they're troops. They're going to do a cresting volley, most likely. Yeah. That's just what I think they're going to do. If they were smart, they wouldn't say anything. They would charge straight in. Mm -hmm. If they do a shot before they charge in, it'll be a major loss, in my opinion. Uh, now, these six up and oh, over and charging a little bit like early. They're charging? Looks like they're just charging. Uh, they are they're shooting, but, you know, and, in my uh, opinion, I always was, think that. Was that, better than that, was, that was better than I expected, but I still think the Rebs like, are going to win that charge. I'm not going to call it because a lot of those Confederates are still reloading. Um, so it looks like the Nath Corps may be able to kill those Confederates who are reloading, then sweep oh. into the ones who weren't. Oh. Union out being taken loss at 20 minutes. That's, uh. Union guys. Lost. Guys, you shouldn't be standing around all day. Maybe you should. <laughs> you got, you gotta move in. Yeah. Drake and I, if Drake and I are able to talk about like life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for ten minutes, you're not doing well as an attacker. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just dropped my fucking mouse on the ground, trying to try trying to trying to sweep over. Um, I uh, some I, some action though. First Union regiment moving. All right. Oh, they thank God they're doing the strategy right. that used to work for once. But they're by themselves. Mm -hmm. so. And they're probably going to die all by themselves, too. Uh, the IVB and the 7th Massachusetts are now holding the center. Again, I think that both these rounds, the defenders are... Well, the attackers, whenever they charge, the defenders just wipe them. Um, mm -hmm. And I think these uh, these defending regiments, especially, uh, these Confederates, they're able... Well, and, and that's point, New York. I guess, you know, there's there's one Union regiment playing on Confederacy, just to make the numbers even. So, it seems like the Confederates oh, actually, there's only two. have one gun left, though. There's Watch actually a lot of Union. The first Maryland, I'm pretty sure they're Union also. There's never mind. There's a lot of union on the Confederacy. Yeah. Balancing yeah. and everything, you can't get it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, uh, you know, a lot of regiments don't like balancing. Oh, we want to play union, but I personally always loved uh, changing it up, playing uh, playing, with playing different maps. people. Yeah. Yeah, different perspectives too. Yep. And again, when it got to bigger rounds, I, uh, you know, it is always fun to, um, what's it called? outnumber the enemy. You can see over here the artillery not only aim at the wrong area, but they had the fuse set over 170 yards too far. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember, I, there's, there's a clip, there's a really funny clip of uh, somebody falling over and dying, but then I can hear all this thought in the background saying, alright, setting my, my gun to 270 yards and shooting at the church, it's like, it's like 100 yards away, barely. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Holy, if you're watching, I'm sorry for doing the character of you, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah. So the seventh mass holding the center. The AP's twentieth. I I I don't know. Ooh. Ooh. The AP's twentieth main. We're able to get in the flank over here. Oh no. They're screwed. <laughs> they, got a, they got a nice volley off, killing a good few Confederates. That was actually pretty nice volley. Um, but, oh, they're running into the woods. The Union, now, if, if the Union are able to run to this oh. rear and take up this fence line, they'd have a great chance at actually being able to turn the tide of this game. If they take this fence line, they have a oh. great chance at winning. Uh, hopefully the 20th, uh, I bet that they're hoping at least, that they're able to get away. And, no, they're holding. They just, they're turning around. That's, it's, that's a better You know, I, I think the Union has given up. I, yeah, probably. I really think the Union's not trying to win. I think they're just trying to have a good time. Yeah, that uh, it's definitely a, a major um, not like morale losses in game, but like morale loss for your uh, your players when you lose the first round. Um, it's it's a I, I hate to say it, decreaser. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Pry Forward is the Union pick. Um, for those of you yep. who don't know, Cord Works usually the uh, so let's see, this is hosted by the Fifth NC. So yeah, yeah, Pry Forward is the Union pick. Um, uh, the way they do it is usually the um, the people who are not hosting yeah. pick the first map. So the, yep. the Union picked the first map, which is probably forward, and they, well, they lost it. And that's really, uh, it really does suck to lose the map that you picked, the map that you planned for. Mm -hmm. um, and now they're going to the map that the Confederacy planned for. The Confederacy um, probably picked this Dunker Church map. Uh, I'm glad the Confederacy picked this map because it's a more balanced map. Now I've seen Confederates be like, all right, we're going to choose a counter-charge map so we can 100% win because we have a lot of tickets. Yeah. You know, that's one of the major downsides of uh, of the way the coordination is done. I can't really see a solution to it, though. Um, it's that oftentimes... Ooh, artillery getting closer, but not really hitting still. Uh, oftentimes, the neither side wants to pick one of the more fun maps that are more lopsided. For example, Bloody Lane, or... Um, I can't really think of any other good ones. Uh, uh, River Crossing. River Crossing is a phenomenal map to play on as both sides, even though the Confederates stand virtually no chance at winning. But yeah. I still remember one time when the... Um, the USA Grand Campaign team lost it. Confederate sitting taking losses at 16 minutes. If the Union hadn't hit taking losses like 10 minutes ago, I would say that this is a Union biased map, uh, or Union biased so far. 16 minutes is relatively early to taking losses on, uh, so, but still, we'll see, it's, see. We'll see what the Union does because if they, if they, you know, decide, you know, we can win this, mass up a charge, get a good charge, and hit them down to breaking. I think, like I said, it's never over. Yeah, it's never it really over too early, but you could see when things are going wrong and you can see oh crap i mean i yeah. still think the rebs are going to win this but i think union could also possibly pull off the win at their butt but i've seen more crazy stuff happen but now with the uh this is the six wisconsin being just like they're they were shooting randomly they're only killing a couple guys in that rebels advanced... charging union artillery i don't know if you could uh, go to oh my god no way really yeah. holy yeah. shit oh my god yeah <laughs> this is the fifth florida and the fifth north carolina you know what? As much as this will be very cool for the Confederates, uh, this does give the Union an excellent opportunity to take the right flank in their absence. Oh, yeah. um, noticing how the Union have done, though, they're uh, they're not playing well. Uh, yeah, look at this. They're Instead of charging up and over and taking the right while the Confederates are um, busy, they're sitting there in the center shooting at the Confederates. Uh, if you didn't know, I hate to tell it to you, 7th, but you're not going to win by shooting these guys. You're not going to do anything to them. Like, that's not doing anything. Uh, so, yeah. It's, um, no matter how good you think you are, at 70 yards, look at the, how spread out those Confederates are. Sure, if you killed it's, one, it's it'd be cool, be but you're not going to kill any. It's, it's yeah. a hard shot. Especially if you're in the line, and I hate to say it, um, because it'll make a lot of people, you know, like, no, I don't do that. But think about how much you just go autopilot more rights, and you're aiming, you don't even try to aim, you just, like, put the gun in their direction and pull the trigger. A lot of the time... Uh, people make themselves a little like like a little bit of busy work, and they just shoot and reload, shoot and reload, not really uh, focusing on the elevation, focusing on the exact left and right axis, you know. Um, so yeah, shooting far away when you're on independent fire is bad in that way. And that what uh, could help the union is if they get any unit, like any one unit, like it doesn't matter the size, if they get anyone behind into the rebel forest, mm -hmm. they can do some damage. I mean, Sever, I think you remember the. Uh, when I was when I was playing with you, when I'd get just like six yeah. guys in the forest behind me, and we'd just run around and cause mayhem, uh -huh. and that that could that that would help. I mean, like mm -hmm. you know, just taking advantage, like killing the respawns, killing their artillery when no one's defending it, like getting those yes, few yes, out of lines. That's, that's a lot of ticket. That's a lot of tickets. That's, it adds up. It adds up. You know, one out of line is is five information deaths. So mm -hmm. yes, I I agree completely that if the union were able to get somebody through and. 
the the biggest thing about having somebody in those woods is like you said, killing the out of lines, um, and secondarily is making the Confederates think there's more guys in the woods than there really are, and tying up the resources there. Uh, however, I'm looking here and I'm thinking, as you were saying that, how would the Union get some guys through? Like there's Confederates everywhere, you know. Like if they, 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 they uh, this whole map boundary on all flanks is Confederate. So yeah, it's just time, time and time, patience and. Yeah, they late for the Union. Only. They used all their time shooting independent fire for 20 yeah. minutes. <laughs> like if the Union <laughs> would, not hitting the road. If the Union would do a big charge and really, um, like, it, they don't even necessarily have to win the charge and kind of have like a, like a small yeah. like six man group hold back and Rebs all go one way. Union mm -hmm. could just sneak in with a few guys and there you go. They have a foothold. Maybe get a flag. Possibly get yeah. a flag in the woods. That could be also devastating for the Rebs because they just lose. An entire flank to, uh, to a small group. Mm -hmm. We do see here that the regiment, that the 7th Maine, the 8th Connecticut, the 10th Georgia, and the 20th Maine all share. If they were to get their flag bearer, Mr. Vector over here, into the woods, even if they lost a melee, if they had them skirmishing, they can have an entire force back there the Confederates didn't know about. Um, but the Confederates, at every time, at every place along the way, have done a great job in stopping the Union uh, dead in their tracks. I don't think the Union have ever even touched that road. Um, that's impressive on the excuse me, on the Confederates' part, um, they're almost playing it like I play fucking Ultimate General games where they're just pushing forward <laughs> everywhere because they know it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's insane. Yeah. I mean, what the fuck are these guys doing? It, there's 12 minutes left, and they're sitting <sighs> on a fence line near their spawn shooting. Calm like, down, okay, I know, Calm I'm down. just mad. I, okay, thank God. These are our viewers. You see, <laughs> I know, I, I, had to, I had to yell at Imperador <laughs> to get him charged. You see, Imperador needs this little bit of encouraging. <laughs> To charge over uh, maybe don't lose your base in rust next time and uh, maybe you'll do better <laughs> yeah um so yeah they're pushing up and over we gotta do an iv rust server again that was fun or not an iv uh, war rights community rust server um and now they're retaking their artillery positions and i fear that they're gonna put too much emphasis on their artillery um like they did both these rounds where instead of using their artillery to clear position and suppress before they did a charge they're trying to use them to knock down tickets i think I mean, the reds which... have like one guy, maybe another one, working on just one artillery gun. Yeah, has, that's all you really need. Unit has 15 guys on it, and mm -hmm. I don't see them really yeah, 15. doing a lot of damage to the Rebs. And Rebs, to be fair, Rebs are moving around. Oh, oh wow, as I say that, Rebs get hit. Um, I didn't see anybody get it. Shell. Yeah, there was a few blood splats, but... Oh, over in the um, far left? Yeah, you in far left. Huh. Well, at the same time as that artillery had happened, the Union are now advancing on the far right. It looks like an advance of the uh, 9th Corps and the I AP is 20th, or AP is IVB. Uh, uh, a rebel volley going over a majority of the Union heads, um, which is surprising because they got bucking ball. You know, you'd think like half of them would aim low, if, actually. Uh, but that's not what you see. You saw a lot of them aiming high there. Um, again, they're they're not they're not that far away. I, I hate to tell you guys, but that that's not that far. That's like. Barely 130 yards max. I, I would even say a little bit shorter than that. But you know, you'll still see people shooting like, "Oh, here guys, use 200 yard sights." It. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen that as much anymore. That's because I bought the IVP was just 69th New York. Mm -hmm. Remember, remember back when you had to aim bottom of the pin and we were like the best shots ever. <laughs> that was that was. Oh my god, I almost enjoyed that bug because nobody else knew about for, it. For newer people, um, there's some regiments here that played a long time ago and. They used to be super big. Like Ninth Corps used to fill up uh, 150 people. Like, wow, well, I close, close, close. I, I've seen I, I don't bring... think I don't think even half that. I think Whatever. I've seen them bring like 70 plus people. I I've seen 70 plus, yes. Which used to be a full side back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Finally, the Union get, get up the currents to charge over the far left. The Sixth Wisconsin finally charged out the Confederates. It only took them 20 minutes. Um, if they hit breaking right now, like right now, the Union would stand a chance. Uh, oh, yeah. Imperator getting uh, like two thirds of kills in that melee. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, because even if they break right now, though, the look at just how many Confederates are on that point. Um, Union, in fact, getting yeah. breaking. <laughs> because uh, over here on the far right, they are trying to charge, but instead of charging, they're just like going really close and then shooting. Which, if you didn't know, they have bug and ball. That's not gonna work. Um, yeah. When you're facing ball, against if ball, you guys don't know what buck and ball is. It's 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 a shotgun shot basically. Mm -hmm. Yes, Buckshot was named after Buck and Ball. Uh, it is, it's, in game, it's four small pellets. In real life, it was a uh, one small round ball and then three small round balls. Um, but you can see over there, the 20th New York was able to pull off and hold the entire Union charge there, pretty much by themselves with the Buck and Ball. They had some support over there from their right, but the that was 
the uh, massive Union push that was just completely decimated, barely even any of them hit, even hit the fence line. Um, Confederates doing great job positioning themselves, seeing a majority of the uh, can, uh, the Union not on the left, are moving their troops to the center. Um, but I don't know. It's the, the time for maneuvering is over. If the Union want to win right now, they're gonna they have to get to extremely them. lucky. Yep. Yeah, this, they need aggressive. to charge. They need to be aggressive. They needed to charge half an hour ago, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm not saying we we say this a lot. Charging wins the game, and it does win the game. And we always said it's they need to charge here. I'm like, well, some people want to shoot. That's an argument, but really, I think what really wins the game is good charges in the right time and mm -hmm. and um, firing when when is necessary, not not when you want to. Yes, and I uh, I hate to be a negative Nancy here, but I doubt if you ask any of these people who are kneeling, independent firing while kneeling with a probably a completely gray screen, black and white. Um, I, I can, I've heard a lot of people say, well, you know what? It's a thousand times more fun to volley. I love, you know, I can understand melee and all that shit, but volleying a big volley battle back and forth is great. Um, these groups, I think, would be much better off uh on their ticket wise if they just used one or two man space lines and volleyed um although you know individual marksmen aren't uh able to um you know show off their prowess there the majority of men uh on independent fire are just like psychologically speaking you're it's not that you're not there it's that you are not That's trying it. to be a sharpshooter meanwhile if you're volleying um, you almost feel pressured by everyone else. It's a it's oh, a real look, thing. Look at the rib charge in by himself. Look at him go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I always like how there's a little bit of a no man's land atop the hill. Um, and then usually <laughs> the officers try to go up there with their six shots. Okay, remember, if you were there at that one European event, uh, I said that I judged officers if I like them based on if they have a Lamat or not. Let's see how much I like Doug. Doug has a Lamat? I can't really tell. Cause he, can, you, can you start moving, Doug? Yes, he has Lamat. I like you, Doug. Nice job, Doug. Oh, yeah. one of them is playing, one of them is playing Bashar al Assad oh. music. <laughs> and that's bringing back flashbacks. Oh, yeah. Oh, my that's, God. That's a meme itself. <laughs> Who's playing that? I got no yeah. Uh, Let me see. First, Maryland private high tech redneck. Mm, high tech Aww. redneck. Allah Siddiqui Bashar. Inshallah, brother. <laughs> Inshallah. Oh, my God. I just noticed how much blood is on the ground by, like, by the Union cannons. Just showing that. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Oh, nice job doing volleys there, um, but a bit late. A bit late. You should have been doing that half an hour ago. Um, the Union, again, we said it three minutes ago. They should have charged. We're I I'm going to say it now. They should still be charging. Like, I hate to say it. Yeah. You don't stand a chance. And is anybody really having fun independent firing and just, like, with a black screen and kneeling and shit? Right? Some. I guess. I guess. Some, some. people are masochists. <laughs> I mean, some people play a Factorio, so. <laughs> don't hit me. That game sucks. Um... Like, I guess you can debate me in the comments, but yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, hey, uh, here I'm playing like fucking Rimworld in my free time, I guess. Yeah. The uh, Union have have we seen a single successful Union charge? Like either game? No, I don't. The think thick, the six Wisconsin, charge. the six Wisconsin's little pistol charge worked for like half a second. Oh, uh, they're immediately put down. Union charging though, far, far. Our uh, Union left. Right, yeah, Confederate right. I saw somebody try to say that you should always say left or right based on the attacker, and I thought that yeah. was, I mean, I, I can understand that, but at the same time, why the fuck bother standardizing it? Yeah. Now I'd go real like to get a foot on the fence. Um, no, looks like the Union lost that charge. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that guy's went flying, oh. if you saw that on the screen. Yeah, it looks like they you, Oh my gosh, Confederates are breaking, guys, charge point. I'd be late for that. I that. mean, it's four minutes, and let's just say the Union gets lucky and wins one charge. That's all it takes. They win one charge. And they yeah, the the, uh, the Confederates just charged over the hill in the center and can just murdered the Union. Okay. Like they're, uh, they're all dead. All of them just died. <laughs> yeah, I, we, we completely missed it. It took oh, less than a minute. No. Le in oh. less than a minute, the, uh, the Confederates just completely wiped pretty much both of the Union positions that were available to attack them. Um, Union are going to be spawning in from Maine now if they want to even stand a chance. And again... If they had final push right now, funnily enough, they wouldn't lose any time. There is no downside to dying out of line right now for the Union. Uh, of course, Confederates is the last stand. You haven't said anything at all. No, no, man. I've been messaging some other stuff. Wow, we're not on. You guys, you guys, are doing, you guys are doing a fantastic job. I'm organizing an interview <laughs> with the Reds leaders for after this. It's based. Oh, hell yeah. That's going to be cool. Oh, uh, okay. Should I prepare any questions? Uh, no, just finish this and we'll figure it out.
Okay, okay. Right. This is awesome, man. Um, yeah, we can see some Confederate art or Union artillery hitting the nipple. Um, I didn't see any red mist, but that doesn't mean that the shrapnel didn't kill him. I'm pretty sure red mist is only caused. I could be wrong here. Please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But I'm pretty sure it's only caused by the main bolts actually hitting the enemy. Yes. Yeah. I. I. Well, I've seen the red mist happen with uh, nearby explosions for K shot. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't think the shrapnel from a K shot, like the shrapnel itself, no, no, could. No, no. Yeah. So who knows if they're shooting a K shot there, um, then uh, we really don't know how many losses that they're going to inflict on them from afar. We'd have to be right up in the in the uh, case of the Confederates to see what's happening. Um, again, Union with just three minutes left, and these guys are doing what? They're not even volleying. They're independent firing. Um, I think what what we said in Pry Four, we we both agreed that artillery is not really doing the the best of jobs. I mean, each side's using artillery, and we haven't really seen really really good hits. Mm -hmm. Like we've seen hits, but we haven't seen like. Yes, we've seen kills, but not yes. strategically important stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's what pretty much what we've seen both this game with the Union. Um, whenever they get any success, it's in the form of kills. It's not in the form of tickets, or yes. it's not in the form of anything else. So that's strategic importance, yeah. um, taking a certain area. Like you know, if the Union took this this the far Union right, Confederate left, with but suffered like a lot of casualties. I wouldn't be opposed to that because that's mm -hmm. expected and it's a strategic position. But it but seems like the entire talking. game, yeah, it seems like the entire game the Union has mm -hmm. attempted maybe like once or twice and just decided let's keep going back to the center because, you know, it's the center. I, yeah. I don't understand. There's just so many corpses all around there. You can't see yeah. it, but from my point of view, there's, there's a lot of Yankee corpses and barely any rebel corpses mm -hmm. a massive sh uh, shootout over here on point and again with the union i don't think they appreciate is just how much buck the confederates have uh i know let me look real quick I, I don't think the second south carolina can get buck and ball but i know for a fact no that the, the other regiments yeah oh wait no no wh which one's blue blue one the one that with blue collars can't get it i right, whatever one of them can't one that's, of them that's can. the south carolina that's okay that's south okay. carolina boys yeah. yeah yeah then uh then the regiment with those blue collars they are stuck to having uh Rifles, but the rest well, of them have Union won a charge, but it looks like the Confederates are getting reinforcements. Yeah, the, the Union, I think, only won that because the Confederates are holding back. The Confederates don't yeah. want to lose the point, um, so yeah. they didn't want to, uh, which I think pretty wisely, they're holding their men up there. Let's see what regiment over here is held in reserve. If the Union wins on point or over there on the hill, then it's it'll be the PA yeah. that they yeah. fade off against. Yes. The, you see, they used to final push and lost no time. Um, it's because it gives you enough time to run from point to main twice, but it doesn't up your timer at all. So the Union, um, although they have final push, they didn't lose anything. They have practically been on final push for the past five minutes, but oh, they yeah. didn't realize it until a minute ago. Well, seems Rip. like Union is going to lose, like we've said before. Um, I don't even think the Union respawns all the way back at, at you know, spawn, Union spawn, will even make it in time to do anything significant. They are grugging and going, though. Um, never mind. They, they fixed their bayonets with 40 seconds left in the game. They spent five of those. Rebs counter-charging now. Which is a good idea to stop. Well, I don't know, actually. Mm -hmm. The Union could get an overtime if they were able to get a couple of rambles through. But they have an officer back there with a pistol uh, who would stop that. Artillery still shooting artillery, yeah, artillery for no exactly. reason. Exactly. <laughs> if these artillerists anything. a minute ago ran over there behind the Confederates, and were, if they were on point right now and at the time hit zero, time. They, would yep. get, yeah, they would get an overtime. Um, but you know what? People don't, uh, artillerists just want to shoot artillery from their position five yards away, 500 yards away. Not really, I think it's more like 70. But they think it's that's 500 it. yards away. Uh, that's it. Yep. I and think the casualties, um, I think they're going to be a little bit more even on this map. Actually, I, no, no, I think it'll no. be ex pretty no. much, I, I expect the same deviation as last round, if not yep. larger. I, I just realized, I was like, wait, did you even win any charge? They won yeah. maybe one. Yeah, maybe, maybe one if you even count that. Technically, did the melee ever even stop up there? I would say no. So you think there'll be more casualties this round than the last round? I think overall, yes. I think between yeah. the two regiments, between the two sides, probably. Um, but it's hard to tell because there was a, a huge period there in the middle of the game where nothing happened. So maybe we're uh, not considering that. I guess we'll see, we'll, we'll see though in a couple seconds. Jesus Christ. You didn't no take ratio. losses before yeah. 28 minutes. What the fuck? Yeah. Imagine that. Every single Union man died at least twice within 15 minutes of the game starting, on average, at least, you know? Look at that. What's it's looking like? Yeah, it looks very similar to the first round in losses. Very similar, yeah. actually. Yeah. Oh, God, almost yeah. the same. <laughs> yeah. Union only taken almost 40 more losses. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, one of the Point York members just got server muted and got unserve muted. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so that was, again, another 
interesting round to watch. Confederates really just clamped down there. Uh, let's start our debrief, and then we're going to do some interviews with some of the uh, regimental leaders tonight. So first, we'll start with Sevy, then go to Drake. Sevy, what did you think of that second round? The second round played out a lot like the first, where the Union, um, I just think due to the fact that they were uh, too many chefs in the kitchen, and also due to the fact that uh, the Confederates were having a better, uh, I, I don't want to say a better position, just more tight together, um, being defender, the Union, it felt like they didn't try. Um, they they could have done a lot more there to be aggressive. They could have done a lot more to um, not just sh- sit there and invent fire. Uh, but instead of doing that, instead of doing anything, instead of pushing on the far right, instead of pushing on the far left altogether, they split themselves up. And whenever one of the groups charged, it was alone. And the Confederates were just able to group up and face off against the one alone guy, one alone group, and win. So yeah, that, those are my two cents. All right, Drake, what did you think of that second um, round? I think both rounds are the same. Uh, I think we needed to do more. <laughs> needed to do more charging. Um, uh, the reps played it uh, around around the same. They um, basically just held and won. Um, but yeah, but it was still it, it was still um, you know great rounds for both sides. Good charges. So yeah. <clears throat> All right. Thank you for your guys' insight. We'll be having an interview with Hot Coco from the uh, Confederacy with the 20th New York. And then we will have uh, Michael North from the Union Perspective, uh, AP 20th Maine. That'll happen in a moment. All right. That was a fun match. We have two of the leaders tonight, one from the Union and one from the Confederacy. We have Michael North from the uh, AP 20th Maine was leading with the Union tonight, and then a hot Coco from the 20th New York who was leading with the Confederacy. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to ask him a couple questions, and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. So going into uh, Pry Ford, what was your guys' game plan? Uh, we'll start with uh, Michael North first. What was your guys' game plan in Pry Ford, and how did, how did it turn out? How did you react to the changing match? Well, you know, on Pry Ford, the Confederates have that strong already position to our left, so we wanted to kind of keep them busy and draw them to the left and stay away from the right. And it was kind of a tough situation because with coordinating charges and timing, it didn't really work out for us how we expected it to. Um, Groups were going in at different times. And I think AP was usually some of the first ones in with Ninth New York also. And uh, it just didn't work out how we expected it to. And we weren't really able to adapt and come up with a new plan on the fly, which uh, showed to be disastrous for us, honestly. And uh, going into it, though, I knew it was going to be a tough match. We had three good groups, good groups we were up against and pretty good leaders. So. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Coco, how was the first round for your team? Uh, very standard. Um, the idea was to hold the left by the rocks and the death laid past the point. Um, and basically just kind of hold that little U shaped, I guess. Uh, while, uh, we have a couple skirmishers harassing their arty and we have our artillery just hammering the unit as they try to attack it. Um, and we kind of just stuck through that the entire game. Sweet. And now we'll focus on the uh, Dunker Church round. We'll start with uh, Michael again. Same question, except now in the Dunker Church round. Uh, Kind of the same plan as Pry Ford. The plan was to hold the left and the center. And when that didn't prove to, uh, to work out, we tried to move right. And they were just able to shift to our movements. We got that big open field. And they can see us moving left and right. And they were able to adapt to that very quickly. All right. Thank you. Coco? Well, we started off with the idea. Uh, we were basically going to hold two groups in the right, two groups center, two groups left. Uh, with one group in the center being able to shift around. Um, but since no push happened to the left, we shifted those <laughs> groups over towards center. Uh, and we basically squeeze everybody in when they initially charge the the nipple um and once they once we basically fall through that charge we squeezed in on the center the center uh, hill which we called victory hill uh and after we took that we kind of just got 
aggro as fuck. Uh, and pushed far to the left on the snake. Oh, the center snake fence. We pushed all the way up that. We pushed all the way up center hill, and we started pushing all the way to the right on the arty. Uh, and once we got the you know the taste of blood, we kept on going, uh, and we just didn't stop pushing. So mm -hmm. that was kind of the the major change, I guess, in the in this strategy. Uh, and towards till till like uh, towards the end, uh, when we started hitting like taking uh, losses and stuff, then we started slowly retreating, I guess, a little bit and holding the left side if we saw a flag shift over there. Um, but for most of the map, it was we played hella aggressive on a defensive map. All right. Yeah. Thank you for your guys' insights. Uh, Drake or Seven, do you guys have any questions for them? Well, I got a question for... Uh, for oh, your, 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 your microphone's fucked, by the way, Drake. <laughs> uh, I, I, I got a question for the uh, for North. Um, looking at these both these maps, it looked like uh, the Union tried strategies um, that were, I, I, I would say, not very um, done much in the community. Uh, but then it took a long time to adapt to a changing situation. How do you think you guys are going to uh, go forward and avoid those mistakes? Um, I think that it's it's more it's a good question. I like seeing strategies that haven't been done repetitively, just because I like to do different things. I don't like to do the same thing over and over, even if it works. You know, I'm here to have fun mostly. Uh, I was all for any plan that was being thrown on the table. Uh, the problem was is um, timing and commitment. I don't think everybody committed to the whole plan. I know that ah. when we were supposed to be charging in, we had a group off to the far left that was keeping their arty busy, which is you know a good thing. But also we needed everybody on point at at, at all time. You know when we needed them. So I noticed that too. I think that. Going forward, we just need to be more communicative in chat. I myself tend to be pretty quiet and listen more than I talk. So I think I'm going to be speaking up a little more and reporting where I am, where I'm going, what I'm doing, what I need. So if, I think uh, there's a lot of new, for the union side especially, there were, there were two pretty seasoned leaders, but a lot of us were new leaders. I'm one of them. And we're learning too. So that was a lesson learned for us. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for answer. Hot Coco, Michael North. Um, I want to ask both of you, uh, what was your main concerns? Um, since you guys are both from different teams, so one's union, one's confederate. What were your concerns? Um, we'll start with Coco. Like, um, major threats. I'm not going to lie. We didn't have too many. Uh, <laughs> knowing, <laughs> knowing that 7th Mass and ninth Corps love putting dumbasses on Arnie, uh, we knew every melee we could win instantly because they would have 20 guys in Arnie, which they did on the first map. Uh, <laughs> they had 20 people in the beginning on Arnie, uh, which we'd love to see. Um, but uh, hey, You were on Arnie, weren't you? I was, but we but we had 8. Yeah. So I'll take 8 over 20. And... And we actually got kills. Man, no, no, no shade. Hey. But if there's any they, they seventh, some, seventh cool I, kills too. No shade. But if there's any seventh mass or uh, or ninth core artillery guys in here, I wouldn't do uh, counter battering the whole game because it wasn't that effective. I, I, I yeah. you know, I right. don't stick up for artillery, but they did get a couple of kills. <laughs> um, but uh, no, nah, I mean like, I'm trying to think, um. What we're scared about maybe like uh I don't know, but the strategy played have been seasoned and tested, and and there wasn't much really worrying we had to do because everything we kind of expected. Um, I don't know, not trying to be an ass, but I'm just like uh, it's just like it's it's a, we've played those I've played those maps so many times and. Like no matter what, the union eventually has to charge the point on Parai and on Dunker. They have to push the right or the left or the center. So it's just those three spots you got to worry about, and there's nothing else there really you can do. So it wasn't too much we were really crazed about, or you know worried about or whatever. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, uh, oh, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> it happened again. Right again. These these blooper moments are gonna be fire. <laughs> Uh, Michael, just just go, go. You speak, please. What okay. What was your major concerns? Um, our major concerns. Uh, Dunker Church was. I wasn't really concerned. I we know the map pretty well. And we've played it a lot, and uh, it just was what it was. How it ended up. Pry Ford, I was pretty concerned the whole time because we were repeating the same 
charge in tactic from the same spot over and over. I didn't have much confidence in it, but I'm kind of person that doesn't, you know, like if I have an order, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, that's what we were requested to do. So that's what we did. I wanted to go right and try and push people off the rocks a little bit, but that uh, we tried that once and were asked to come back to point and were kill- killed immediately. And um, yeah, my main concern on, on Pry Ford was um, there was no cover. You guys had a good, uh, good surrounding uh, positioning on us, even in that little defilade in the middle where there is really the only spot for cover. It was... It was Death Valley in there. There was no safe spot for us anywhere. And uh, so kudos to you guys on that. Um, and like I said in the beginning, my main concern going into this whole battle was uh, 20th New York was with uh, Maryland and Sussy. And, you know, you guys had good groups. I knew it was going to be a tough fight from the start. So, um, yeah. yeah. Sweet. Yeah, thank you guys for... Um answering our questions uh with that being said thank you everybody for watching the video tonight um thank you guys for doing the interviews and the announcers all regimental discords are in the description please like comment share subscribe for more join our discord we need more frontline reporters the more the merrier thank you all for watching have a good night